brother, about the no mention, you know, okay. that, that you hit me to. And is it okay that I read straight from your bio when I start to read your mm -hmm. bio? What was, okay, so yeah. uh, word for word, that's cool, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what else, what else? Do you, do you prefer Tommy Jenkins or Tommy? Yeah, Tommy. Tommy, do you want me yeah. to change your screen name on this thing? Yeah, if you if you can, if you okay. like, yeah, that'd be cool. I was gonna mention that. I didn't know if you could, but you right there. Yeah, no, I want to make sure. Cool. Hey, am I am I all wetting up over here? No, you look great. Oh. No, I'm over here just getting hot. Tommy, I don't know if you can move your camera just a bit. To there you go. Perfect. Now you're right in the center. Okay. Let me, uh, I know my, my computer's gonna, okay, how's that? <laughs> that looks good. Yeah, that looks wonderful. And okay. then uncle, yeah, no, see, it's funny. I can't see what you see, but on my end, you don't look shiny or anything. Okay, cool. I know, shiny. oh, I said, like, I use the word shiny, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> good yeah. to see my hand. You're, you're glistening. <laughs> 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 Thank you, baby. Well, I was looking right here. So <laughs> <see that>? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, but the show must go on. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Larry Dotson sends his what's up to you, brother. Oh, that's my man. Oh, yeah. Oh, when, you, when you get a chance, if you could see his episode that when he, that when he came on with us, man, he went into the story of y'all's tour with Clinton yeah. and everybody. Oh, yeah. That was there awesome. was a Barquet's cameo and uh, George Clinton, man. That was our first tour. That's what he said, man. He yeah. was my brother. He said, man, that was one of the best times of his, the Barquet's career, that whole time. Yeah, yeah, I have to agree that that was, that was a very special, especially for the young guy, young cats, man, who never been on a big tour like that. In the very first tour, you were on the stage with the mothership, and the legendary barcades. I mean, it was it was amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah. He said so you know we had to bring it every oh, night. We had to. Man, shoot, man. And then it was wild. After his, my a uh, lot of people start. I learned a new term. DMing me about you know the, that that they remember the tour and how it went. They were like, man, cameo funk down. They remember <laughs> to this day. You know, they remember that man. Right. So, oh, when are you going to join me on the top for the positive shout outs? Yes. Now, did you want to call me on or did you want me to just to be on when you first start? Yeah, I'll call you on. Okay. And and if you could bring Warren's in, that'd be fantastic. Oh, heck yeah. Sure. And so, I got I'm gonna, you brother. so you uh, both already did the, the pre-check. You want me to go ahead and start uh, connecting to the live? Sure. You, you right. ready, brother Tommy? You cool? I'm good. All right. All right. on to the show so we'll we'll have a link tommy if you want i can send it to you via text if you wanted anyone to look at it on facebook it doesn't oh. generate until we go live okay yeah uh, can you text it to you said you're gonna text it right sure yes okay good yeah do that that'd be good thank you tommy that would be great man Sparkle in your eye. Come on, man. And I'm loving the new song, by the way. <laughs> I had okay, to which just one? let you know. Oh, the whatever, whatever it change? takes. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. I just was listening to it earlier today. I was like, okay, heck yeah. yeah Artivism. Yeah. Yes. And at the end of the interview, brother, I'm going to make reference to it. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to play it. Okay. Uh, at the end of the interview. And then if you wouldn't mind coming back for those last three seconds of goodbye after the uh, after the video. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, no question. All right. I'm just putting this last little bit. So I'm, when, when he first starts, Tommy, he's going to be um, talking and he's going to introduce me. I'm going to um, count us in first. I'm going to mm -hmm. take both our cameras off, and when he calls us in, that's when I'll ask you to unmute and turn your video back on. Okay, so you want me to mute now? Yes, you can mute now, and then when, when we call you on, I'll ask you to unmute and all that good stuff. 
Okay, cool. Are these, are the, should I shut one of these fans off, Wendy? Are they okay? You know, I don't hear your background. Is my background loud? If it is, I can shut one of mine no, off. I can't hear you. Oh, I gotta turn, turn this phone off. <laughs> That's for sure. All right, I'm about to connect this now. Thank you, girl. We're going live in five, four, three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Victor Brooks from the Victor Brooks Show Facebook Live Quarantine Series. And you know what time it is. It's Sunday, 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. And uh, that's when we have the honor. When I mean we, I mean me, myself and our co-producers, my, uh, my brother Christopher Brooks, my sister Julie McKnight, and the wonderful, incredible Wendy Vaughn. That we, you enable us to, to be able to come to you every Sunday at 1 o'clock p.m. just to, to try to share some positivity, you know, to, 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 to give us all a reminder that there's always something that we can smile about, you dig? Always something that, that we can count as a positivity in these 24 hours that we've been blessed to have, y'all, you know? I always like to say that... Um, <laughs> I try to start it every morning. As soon as I wake up and open my eyes, y'all, I start counting my positives, my blessings, you know? Uh, when I put my foot down on the floor and start walking to where I need to go, hey, that's positive blessing number two. And then I just let the day take from that point, you know? Um, and every time we come on, y'all, I, I, I always have to say that there's, you know, we're not trying to ignore or negate the seriousness of what's happening out here in the world right now. It's heavy, y'all, and it's been heavy for a minute. Um, you know what I say, we're dealing with these two viruses out here, the virus of that corona that put us all on pause. And, you know, you hear words like quarantine or, or what have you, that's, that, that's kind of separated us in, in a lot of ways, but it also has, has, has put a, a vibe on maybe calling the people that we haven't had the time to talk to in a while, family, friends, whoever, um, taking care of those uh, uh, books or what have you, just anything that uh, during this pause that we can look at as a positivity as well. And that second virus is racism. You know, that, that's been with us for generations, y'all, especially here in the U.S. of A. So those two viruses, you know, you can combine them right now, one on top of each other, and the daily grind, oh yeah, we can kind of forget because we're human. I can't judge nobody. It happens to me too. And I'm not saying that every day is going to be all day sunshine, smiles, and jumping around like everything's, you know, uh, uh, better roses, like some people say. But all we're saying is that during these times, we can find something to be positive about. And on behalf of my other producers, Christopher, Julie, and Wendy, we just want to thank you, Positivity Posse, for joining us, taking your time to come on here, hear these tremendous stories, these journeys of, uh, we've, we've, had, we've been blessed y'all to be able to hear journeys and stories from some incredible people, man, that, um, you know, they just got real with us. And uh, it just was an, a continual attribute to what we have loved about them over the years of their career. Um, you know, we're talking about Bill Duke who came on and shared his story, his journey. Clifton Davis, who came on, and, and him and, and Larry Dotson of the Barcades, you know, we didn't know how the conversation was going to go. You know, I got general topics, but we just let it flow, you dig? And when both of them got into their story of, of their life's journey and how it took them down a couple of roads they weren't expecting that was, you know, dark on their times. Hey, y'all, by the end of that interview and that, I hate interview, but the end of that conversation, we all felt that positivity that they were bringing to us. Thank you, Melba Moore, and Frida Payne, and Selena Mimoy, the journalist, and Chris Martin of Kid and Play, and everybody that's come through to, to just share the love, share the, pop, share the positivity in their life, y'all. Um, and at that note, I, I want to bring on my, my, uh, my co-producer, the one and only Wendy Vaughn, who makes it all make sense for us, y'all. Wendy, are you there for these positive challenges today? Hey there. Yes, I am. What's going on, girl? Oh, man. I am having a ball today. Over here, just 
and join. Oh, hold on, I'm, let me turn off my watch party as y'all can see. I'm getting the positivity on every side that I can today <laughs> on this beautiful hot Sunday. <laughs> I'm glad you reminded me. I got to stop by. There we go. So positivity, I got to tell you, today I learned something this weekend and I've been implementing this. It was um, a, a guy who's a yogi on YouTube. You know, YouTube has a lot of great videos and sometimes Wyatt calls it brain food. I call it just like my spiritual food. He said, problems can be possibilities. Mm -hmm. It's your choice on how you look at it because mm -hmm. all life is is just consecutive situations going from one to the one to the one. So if you want to look at it as a problem, then you'll have one type of outcome or you mm -hmm. can look at it as a possibility. Come on. And boy, that helped so much these last couple of days. I just, you know, learned that. So I've been implementing that. So that's my positivity for today. <laughs> oh, that is, I, I'll do that again now. You said the, the, I want to hear that, 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 that reference you made, that it was what uh, now? That again? He said that life is a series of situations. You go mm -hmm. from one to the next, yeah. but you can either look at it as a problem or you can look at it as a possibility. There you go. Problem and, or possibility. I love that. I thought that was so key. So yesterday when I woke up and it's, you know, a billion degrees out here in LA <laughs> and my freezer and my refrigerator wasn't working, I was like, I, I have a possibility to, you know, meet somebody new, but I call this repairman. No, but it, would, but it really worked. It's just a reframing. So, you know, that's, that's where I am. What about you, Uncle Vic? What's your positivity? Hey, you know what? Like I like to say, um, I, I try to be, I remember that I'm too blessed to be stressed. You yes. Do? And uh, that kind of brings me back to old Star Trek episodes that you see that warp speed come back. Yes. That brings me back from that negative tunnel that it's so easy to get into. I mean, especially with, with all the negativity and I want to say in, in news, you know, yeah. and media and, you know, which is, you know, you got some, it, it, that, like we always say, there are things happening out here yeah. that are real, that are negative for real. Yeah. But uh, we can't feed that. You know, yeah. we know it's there. We give it what it what it is. Yeah. But we got to remember that positivity is just as strong. Just positivity as strong. is just as strong. And you know what? On that note, yeah. I want to give a shout out because I know that we both have you know family and friends mm -hmm. out here doing positive things. Right. My little brother Warren Vaughn Come on, has man. a company okay. called Wava, and his website is Wava Life. That's W A V A life.com he is dedicated to helping people balance their inner systems physically with probiotics and so he makes different foods like kombucha have you ever heard of kombucha uncle oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah yes so he makes kombucha he makes uh something else called jun sauerkrauts i use the sauerkraut juice to marinate my chicken and stuff. I mean, you know, we love to cook, both of us. Yeah. So we're always trying to figure out, but, the, but the, the key to his business is that he's in the farmer's markets. He's using all the organic products and things that he sources from local farmers. So I just want to plug him real quick and oh, say, yeah. help this young brother. He's over here doing positive things mm -hmm. and um, really helping his community get their, their body right. That's right. And you know what? Much respect, nephew. This, and I can vouch firsthand the incredible feeling of his kombucha, kombucha concoctions. <laughs> and I remember him and our sister Cherry. Yes. Hipped me to the whole, you know, the, the, the positive dynamics of that health thing. Yeah. You know, and you know when he is doing his own thing and, yeah. and right there at the farmer's market, much respect, Warren. Keep, yeah. it, up, man. Keep it up, man. <laughs> you know what? I, I want to give uh, shouts out as well. Uh, I love, you know, Wendy and Julie and Chris and I said off, you know, that we want to bring back updates of our, of our, of our past guests. And, you know, from the time where they, uh, you know, joined us, they took their time to join us and what they've been doing since then. You know, and out the top of the list, I want to give it off to Queen Melba Moore. All right. So since Melba's interview with us, Melba's, Melba's single, Standing Right Here, okay, her house dance single hit the charts 
and just kept going. All what? right. So already internationally, Melba Moore is still doing the Melba Moreness for the world, y'all. Much respect, Sister Melba. Much respect to you. And thank you again for taking your time when you came on and, and spread the love with all of us. I got to give it up to our brother Clifton Davis, Wendy. Clifton's yes. album was released August 13th, okay? And the name of the album is, I got to read it to make sure I'm getting it to the T, Clifton Davis with the BG Adair Trio, Never Can Say Goodbye, with special guest Take Six, all right? Now, those who know Clifton Davis, oh my we God. all know that he wrote the song Never Can Say Goodbye, blasted by the Jackson Five, all right? But since then has been recorded over 150 times in over eight different languages. I mean, we have the hits from Gloria Gaynor, James Brown re-recorded it, uh, Newbert, Della Reese, Johnny Mathis, the Osmonds, Andy Williams. But this new album from Clifton, come on, y'all. That, that, that collaboration with uh, Take Six and Clifton Davis, out of sight. Yes. Right. So we're going to be bringing y'all updates every episode, y'all. Every I episode. love that. And I remember him talking about it. We were in the studio and he was telling dad. So yeah. it's, oh, okay, that's awesome. <laughs> well, Wendy, thank you. Let's give it up to John Wright. Thank you for jumping on with me, John. Uh, yes. Marilyn Booch, Carmen, yes. Carmen La Carma. Now, Carmen is a designer out of Barcelona, Spain. <laughs> and her hat designs are incredible. So y'all check out Sister Carmen. Sharon Crenshaw, what's happening, fam? Brian Anderson, what's going on? Oh, yeah, I know. We're going to bring it to you. You said Cameo Funk is still alive. That's yes, right. it <laughs> is. We got Juan Devon from The Emotions over here. Mommy oh. over here saying she just wanted to say word up real quick. She's wanted to say word up here. <laughs> Uh, Johnny Rosado, we have LaRonda, uh, Stanford, Kenneth, Kimmins, everyone just giving their love and to the Positivity Posse, they're in the house. Right, so, that's great. All right. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Thank sis you. Wanda. Love y'all. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> excuse me, like you know, we love bringing these episodes to you uh, every Sunday at one o'clock because from the, from the messages that Wendy and I, and Chris and Julie have been getting, our positivity posse, and you know, that's the name we give to everybody that just believes in the power of positivity, y'all. Um, you know, and, and, and the word that we've been getting back from you, the, the, the people who take your time to come on and check us out, is that, you know, the positivity is real, y'all. Positivity is powerful. So thank you again. Today, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I have another honor of bringing to you uh, one, of, um, one of the world's most <clears throat> outstanding musicians, uh, uh, songwriters, performers, singers, uh, creators, innovators of sound, of music, of style, um, that also has become the soundtrack of our lives, um, not just here in the U.S., but the world, millions of fans. Um, and I'm talking about the one and only Tommy Jenkins, y'all. Uh, formerly of Cameo, one of the creators of that sound, of that vibe, of that love that was given to us, that we still vibe on and feel the love and energy to this day. Tommy Jenkins, check this out, y'all. Tommy Jenkins, known the world over as one of the original members of the one and one of the, mo of one of the most successful funk, rock, <clears throat> and R&B bands of all time, Cameo. Tommy has always been an integral part of the group's success over the course of his career and over 17 million records sold. His distinctive tenor sound voice has helped define the group's signature sound as much as ex-partner and co-founder Larry Blackman's Al has done. <laughs> he has also co-written along with Blackman many of Cameo's biggest hits. And I know y'all dig me, such as Candy, Word Up, Single Life, Flirt, Back and Forth, She's Strange, and many others. In 1989, Tommy's LP was released on Electra Records. 
Despite packed with great songs and strong guest stars like jazz saxophonist Brantford Marcellus and the late Betty Wright, unfortunately, internal problems led to Electra dropping the project. But his next solo effort was the independently produced The Way in 2009, with strong production assistance from good friends Marvin Sperling and former time member, the funky Jesse Johnson. The potent mix of tight funk and jazz influenced mid-tempo jams gave Tommy a chance to write and do the music that he felt in his heart and soul. On his 2017 EP release, A Life to Remember, the singer, songwriter, and producer tapped into a deep wellspring of creative and exciting, wholly original music. Currently, Tommy has written and co-produced co with his talented production company, Sound Perception, his next full-length album titled The Game Plan. He says, I'm so proud of how the project turned out. My production team provided the soundtrack to my 40 plus years, y'all, in this business, and the words just flowed. My influences are well represented on, these, on this album of 13 tracks, many recorded live. <laughs> my hope is to release it this summer. In addition, Tommy is also producing the music for the upcoming film, film Isomosis, written by partner Nate Williams and his younger brother Frost. The film chronicles the rise of a successful fictional funk band in the 70s and 80s, a project to which Tommy is well suited. This story has never been told, the funk story, Tommy says. The script is not based on cameo, but it does, and this kind of eerie more contains a few incidents that did happen to us. It's likely real, it's, it's like reality-based fiction since Isomosis isn't a real band. Isomosis is the story of friends growing up together in Chicago in the mid 70s. They play on borrowed instruments, <laughs> unite one night at a neighborhood uh, with a neighborhood guy with money and connection, hears them from playing in a club and they agree to let them him manage them. They go into the studio, record their first album, and it becomes a hit. During the course of their success, everything that befalls any band takes its toll on them, egos, drugs, and women. Ultimately, it's a rise and fall and rise tale. You don't have to be a funk musician to relate to this, but I can tell you from firsthand experience, the script is true to life, right on, Tommy. As a successful veteran producer, vocalist, songwriter, and performer who was born and raised in Rockway, New Jersey, Tommy continues to expand the range of his prodigious talents and his future looks to be as bright as it's ever been. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome a true funk master to us all, the one and only legendary Tommy Jenkins. What's Tommy, happening? There he is, y'all. What's going on? <laughs> wow, that's, that's, that's some introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, man? My grandmother always said, if you're going to do it, do it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate Thank it, man. You, Tommy. Yeah, Thank sure. you so much, man. And like I said, on behalf of our other producers, Chris, Brooks, Julie McKnight, and you met Wendy Vaughn, man, this is a, this is a, a, a grand occasion for us, man, because Tommy... In our lifetime, brother, in our lifetime, and I'm talking about myself, our positivity posse around the world that's watching, uh, here in the States and abroad, man, your creations artistically, brother, have become a soundtrack of our lives, man. You know? Yeah. Thank you for that, brother. Well, it's a blessing. Uh, I'm, you know, when you start out as a teenager, you know, as a kid, dreaming that you could possibly make something out of your your gift or your your what starts out as a hobby you know and something that you really love doing i don't think anybody uh uh for can foretold foretell yeah. what is uh going to be the future and how it's going to work out you know mm -hmm. uh but i believe that it it definitely has uh something to do with the people who surround you who who you surround yourself with who give you encouragement you know your your parents your friends you know, and uh, and uh, just encourages you to to keep going and to develop it as much as you can. 
That's right. This this game is not promised, you know what I mean? Everybody <laughs> knows, knows. That's right. So if you got a chance to make a career out of 45 plus years, come on, man. You just got to give it up, you know? I don't tell me, you know? And you know what? That's why we do this platform, man, because in our small way, we're not CNN or, or none of the big boys, you know, but in our small way, two of the things we make sure we, we have to do first is give it up. We give yeah. it up to the people who come on to take their time, man, like you and others, to just, you know, share this positive journey, man. And then the second, we want to spread positivity. You know? <laughs> well, so, that's what I love about this show, man. <laughs> when you're going through the whole positive thing, I'm like, that's what we need. We need that. We need that, you know, the, the, it's like, it's like uh, uh, you know, uh, you're in the desert yeah. and you come upon some water, you know, and the water is positivity, man. And the desert is just what we surrounded ourselves with now, just a dry kind of dark uh, yeah. uh, vibe, you know, that's not really, uh, it's not conducive yeah. to growth. Unless you, you know, you can, you can inject your own right on positivity into that. Because that's, that's, you know? you know it's up to the individuals, brother. You know, it's, it's up to each and, each and every one of us to, you know, to influence first ourselves to get ourselves on the train and then get everybody else involved man. you know just through our actions and our behaviors yeah yeah and it's almost like you're reading my uh my my, my points here because i always open man asking every guest what's your positivity whether it's one you've had all your life or one that's just getting you through this right now or whatever it is what's your positivity brother tommy Well, a long time ago, I just started, I started meditating, right? And uh, I always, especially in the music business, when, you, when you're traveling, you're running up against all kinds of craziness. And you don't want that to be, uh, you don't want that stuff to be your, what, what, your, what your whole thing is. You know, you don't, you don't want that to be right. something that defines you. So I found out that keeping um, uh, a positive attitude about whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, meditation, good friends, uh, health, yeah. you know, try to be as healthy as I can, I work out, I do what I, I got to do during these times to, to remain positive, because especially now, you know, I mean, it takes an extra effort sometimes. Come on. And uh, those that... Uh, sometimes can't reach that. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to find a way. You got to find something to that you can reach for right. and make it good, make it positive, make, you know, bring some goodness to what it is that you're doing. Come on. And uh, it makes it especially difficult now because we're all stuck at home <laughs> in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. it's when you go out, it's a whole different world. And I think that What's important is to understand that things are, uh, nothing is solid or static. Yeah. Things change. That's the nature of life. That's right. So this too will change. Okay, they have to change. That's right. You know? <clears throat> that's right. Man, that's a tremendous positivity, brother, because meditation, uh, uh, prayer, all of that is a focus of your spiritual self, man, that, exactly. you know, and, and from what I, you know, what, what I gather, what you're saying, when you, we get that sense of self, that peace self, yeah. that's what it's about, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. what it's about. Now, Tommy, I, you know, growing up, brother, I grew up on, on I, I feel blessed to be able to say I grew up on all sorts of music. Okay, I came from a musical family, my mom, dad, and back and forth. So in our home was jazz and funk and rock and soul mm -hmm. and whatever, you know. My dad loved the, the four freshmen and the high lows and all that, you know. Um, yeah. You know, we even, we, we loved our classical, you know. So it was a, a brother, it's something of, like some people say the funk, other people say the funk, but funk. It's something yeah. about the funk, brother that in our household, it was a family collective. My mom's from Dayton, Ohio, Germantown, Dayton, oh. Ohio. So that's like right there, right? Yeah. So it was there, man. Now, what is, let me ask you this. What's your definition of funk, brother? What is funk? Let's start there. See, 
I've heard that question <laughs> asked many damn times. I know you have. I know I've you heard have. it asked many times. And I can it's it's you can put it in musical terms, mm -hmm. you know, you can put it in 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 theory. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I I, I I still can't find it. it's one of those unanswerable right on. Right on. questions because yeah. fuck is uh, when I think about funk music, I don't think about it in terms of the the uh, four and four and the bass or you know how to you know bass and drums or guitars is funky you know I or the I don't think it in terms of that because you can have a slow song you can have a ballad that's funky too you know I think it's you know it may sound you know, redundant and cliche, but I think it's it's a feeling. Come on, yes. you know, it's a feeling that is uh, that you that's hard to describe, and you know it when you feel it. That's right. That's and right. you'll say that's funky because a lot of people, you know, I hear a lot of stuff, and and uh, oh, that's funky, that's funky, and yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to be what our definition of funk is, what we think it is. It could be what someone else may think is funky. Now, yeah. because we can't be so protective of our funk. That, that others can't, you know, that, that others can't define it in their own way. You be hoarding that funk, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's right. Because Well, that brings me to the other point, man, because funk is still relevant around the world. Yes. Okay. I mean, from its its inception, I've heard different stories of, of different people explaining like where it actually began and how it started, but yeah. however and whenever and where, it's still relevant today. All right. Absolutely. What are people holding on to the funk, man? What's gathering that to them right now? Why is it still relevant? Well, because it's real, first of all. Mm -hmm. And if I can, if I, if I can, um, if I can pinpoint uh, something that would 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 probably make sense, okay. you funk is is probably one of the only. I don't want to say genres, but the only the only kind of feeling because that in itself is a, a different kind of thing. Because you have jazz, you got classical, you got pop, you got you know all these other genres. Yeah. But funk is something unique. Yeah. In that it hits you in a certain kind of way right. that uh, is undefinable that you don't know. You say, "Oh, that's funky," and if you're bobbing your head, brother. <laughs> You go. Then you know there you go. It's got some funk in it. There it's you got go. some funk somewhere. You know? <laughs> now you know what, man, when you get a chance to look back on this, what you just broke down now, I the hands are going up, the fist powers are going up. Out of Spain, they said, because funk never lets you down. Out of yeah. Barcelona, Spain, right now. You know, so yeah. that once again gives attribute to what it's doing and has done to the world, man. Right. It's and you know it's positive, brother. Oh, and also because it's not as prominent on the radio in its truest form and still is relevant, that says something That's right. about the music mm -hmm. because it doesn't have to be uh, on the radio. It doesn't have to be, you, you know, uh, promoted in that manner. Mm -hmm. It can, it, because you play it and thankfully, thank God, we still have the music that we can play yes will never ever die that's and that's right. what we used to say you know cam used to say that funk will never die, never die. you know and that's never true die. that's right and from the emotions fan page right now uh wendy and, and wanda von you know the emotions are, are, oh, are, my goodness. Are, are leaking in right now and they're saying hey i was born from the funk so I mean, it's giving the funk, it's giving yeah. all that, that, that life changing, giving thing. Yeah, that's wonderful. You know, brother, tell yeah. us about growing up in Rahway. I know Rahway, Rahway, New Jersey, brother. What you was know Rahway. Oh yeah, we had right. family. Yeah, Plainfield, and we used to go yeah. around. You know. But See, Rahway. Rahway was a great small town. I like to look at it as a village. You know, you can walk everywhere. You know, if you didn't want to drive, you could walk to one sort of one side of the town to the other. You know, and uh, it was it was a really cool place to grow up. You know, one high school, one movie theater. You know, uh, 
had more than one traffic light. Okay, I don't want to make it seem as if it's like you know, but <laughs> right on. But uh, yeah, you know, good friends. Uh, it was it was great. But if I could just touch on a couple of things yes. uh, mm -hmm. during that time, I was growing up in you know in high school in the '60s. Uh, I heard you t touch on uh, racism a little bit when you were talking about the viruses. Right. And of course, everyone was affected by, uh, in the late 60s, by the uprest and uprisings, uprisings. And my father was a police officer okay. in, uh, in Rawway. He was actually, uh, started as a sergeant and then uh, made to lieutenant. And uh, he was taking a, uh, a test to become captain. All right. And, he had a lot of respect in the neighborhood, you know. Not only did the knuckleheads like him, you know, <laughs> respect him, but everybody did because he was fair, you know. Uh, unfortunately, during that time, you know, we had we had uh, riots and things like that, just like in Newark, and you know, every place was going, was on yeah. fire, you know. And um, he got caught up in some nonsense at at the high school because we yeah. had a, a, a real big disturbance at our high school. Okay. And uh, they tried to tell, uh, they tried to accuse him of knowing another black police officer from Plainfield, as a matter of fact, oh. who supposedly was impersonating a police officer. Okay. Of course, the guy was black. My father's black, of course. So they figured, you know, he knows who this guy is. Right. And they hung him up so bad while he was taking his test and trying to uh, uh, try to become, you know, police captain in the town that he had to get attorneys and lawyers and all of that stuff, man. And just turned out that he, he just, this is enough. I can't, I can't yeah. do it. Cause it was just, not only was it a financial toll, but yeah. it was taking a, a, a physical mental toll, okay. Okay. you know, yeah. and to sit and watch that and to know that uh, from the outside looking in, yeah, you know, you may have this idyllic small town, uh -huh. but underneath, yeah, the dark dirtiness, gotcha. you it's know, there. lives. So you know, I saw my pop go through that, and which which kind of formed my attitudes in a lot of ways in terms of okay. race and social justice. Gotcha. Um, so what I did later on was just funnel all that energy into my pen and writing and you know and and trying to write some positive stuff and some some real music you know but raw wave is it's a great town man i <laughs> me and my boys yeah. uh -huh. hey, we know we had a little singing group a couple of the fellas you know you, i was gonna ask you about yeah. that oh you yeah have a music thing brother i mean what was you know growing up did you i, I want to hear about you for did you start off as like acapella did y'all start out with like yes pre-cameo pre pre -cameo. oh pre everything oh, pre -pre -pre brother when when you first started putting that music thing together man man i was like 14 15 16 you know 15 16 and okay. uh yeah, me, Cammy, Wayne, Nate. We had, we had this group called the Emancipation. You know. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Freedom, right? So even then, right? Even even then. So yeah, Emancipation. So we sing at parties, man, on the corners. You know, we do talent shows every now and then. You know, and uh, but that was that was the thing. You know, we did Temptations, the Delphonics. You know, all the Intruders and all those yeah. groups that. People yeah. probably listen and they never heard of, but <laughs> <laughs> so many. No, we getting the hand thrown up here too. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah we, It was, it was, it was. That was the beginning, uh -huh. you know. And 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 I um, actually I met a, a couple of guys who started, which was actually the beginning of my producing. Uh, uh, At fifteen. Periods. Yeah, 15, 16, oh, 17. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. Okay. yeah, I met a couple of guys, uh, a friend of mine who's still a friend of mine today, Aaron. Yeah. Fantastic artist. And uh, he had a couple of guys, you know, a couple of guys, and I would, you know, work with them and yeah. do some music with them and stuff, you know. Oh, and it was so, it was so fantastic yeah. to do that. And New York City was right, right next there. door. That's so right. I'd take the train in. I tried out for the Apollo, Showtime at the Apollo. <laughs> I, know, man. I tried out for that. 
but see, that's that whole Jersey, New York thing, man. That whole yeah. sound music, you know, group. Now, speaking of New York, all right, let's go to the New York City Players, brother. Give me the backstory of the New okay. York City Players, man. Because you brought New York up in there, you know. What, what do we do? What do we? What, what was that about? Well, that was the beginning of uh, actually my formal group experience. Oh, okay. um, and oh. I, I was uh, I was dating a girl okay. uh, back then, and she was in a group uh, playing in a band, and so I'd go to see her play, yeah. uh, sing. Okay. And so one day they were at this club in Queens, and uh, I was sitting there, and I met a guy. Uh, who said, you know, who just struck with conversation. Right. Said, what, what, what do you do? I said, well, I'm a singer. He said, oh, okay. Well, I know a guy who was looking for a singer because he's just disbanding his band and he wants to uh, start another band. Right. So I said, okay, uh, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't mind meeting him. So the next day, uh, I met Larry. That was, that, was, oh, that was the day I met Larry. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, uh, so he started with uh and greg johnson was already with him in his previous group so greg came along and we had some new york cats uh that came and the, the new york city players started that's how we started check that out man yeah. so all from from a club and then now look at the people wow you know these backstories are amazing man yeah that's one of the reasons that I love giving this. When we heard, like I mentioned, one of your funk brothers, Larry Dotson of the Bar Case, came Yes, on. man, that's he, my man. That's it, you know? My and man. as a matter of fact, he went back to a fantastic story. What's happening, Larry, if you logged on today, brother? But uh, he was talking about the, uh, the, the days of that tour. With, with you all and George Clinton. I know I'm jumping ahead, but I'm going no, with the right. flow, brother. I'm going with the flow. <laughs> you know, because you know, that's, that's another thing about the funk. You can't cut it. You dig? You yeah. just... <laughs> Let it go where it go. Let it do what it do. That's what they say. <laughs> you know, he was serious yeah. about how incredible that tour was with you guys and, and Clinton and, and all of that. Tell me your, your, your memory of that tour, man. Certain things I can't mention for prime time. I you know what I'm saying? I can tell you. <laughs> But and imagine a wide-eyed twenty-something-year-old, you know, first tour you're going, Whoa. you know, this is deep. But yeah. sold-out shows <laughs> everywhere you go, stadiums, uh, arenas, packed. The energy, the is the, it was, and even when I watch the videos today of yeah. that time, I get all choked up. You know, because it was just, I wish I could remember one particular, you know, thing, but, you know, we ain't going to talk about how far ago that was. Back back. Back. I don't Went back know. a little bit, but uh, just the overall experience, it still fills me with joy and, 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 and uh, good, honest, it's your first, you know, it's like your first of anything, you know. When you when you you know it's the first of anything that you experience, yeah. and it went on for a whole year. I mean, a year straight. Right. You know, right. and just being on stage, and then at the end, George <laughs> would call out, "Okay, <laughs> carry on, come on, you know? and we come on out, man, and jam with him." You know, while they doing their last number, man, it was just. Oh man, it, brother, it was, what, what, what do you remember? the first if you can that first night of that tour right with all you just explained to us man the whole vibe of it but the first night you hit that stage yeah in that funk tour brother what was that feeling like man okay uh you know it's like if if i was to strap myself into uh, a rocket ship okay. you know okay. and and just wait for the countdown you know, and when it got to zero, yeah. you don't know what you're going to feel gotcha. unless you've been there before. Mm -hmm. You have no idea what you're going to feel. And That's we only true. had 20 minutes, I think. Yeah, you know, right. it's like those, we opened up, you know, but in those 20 minutes, man, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was fire. It was fire. And it's like when, when athletes tell you that good athletes make you good. Or yeah. you know you 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 bring your game up when when you when you're playing against someone that's good. Right. 
that's how it is. That's how it was on that stage because the bar cages were legendary. You know what I mean? Legendary. Yes. yes. So we we on the stage with two legends. <laughs> so what we what we gonna look like? Some chumps? No. Come on, man. No. No, no, no. no, no. no. We we was we, we and and if, you know we brought it because that was the energy that we brought going back to the New York City players for a moment. Okay, right on. That was the energy that we brought from them because our credo was always full out, no matter what. Exactly. People don't come to see you, you know, standing around on stage. Right. They come to see movement. They come to see, you know, exactly. they want they, they we want them looking like this. Oh, 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 yeah. And that was a cameo show. Now, yeah. cameo, and those of us out here, yeah, I know. I'm, when I see me, I'm looking at my people. They're like, <laughs> they digging it. They understand. They remember a cameo show was here. There was left to right. It was back and forth. <laughs> it was yeah. Right. Yeah. And it was yeah. like. You know, and, and if I remember correctly, um, was it Casablanca Records was your first label? Mm -hmm. Okay, Chocolate Cecil, City. Chocolate City. Cecil so, Holmes. Yeah. Cecil Holmes. So you had groups like, what, come on, Donna Summer and Kiss. And, and so that freedom of sound, it was almost like a, was it almost like a perfect fit for Canada? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you have to remember, even back then, music was a lot freer, a lot freer. Um, uh, record labels were run by music people who Come knew on, music, right. you know, Clive and, you know, and, and uh, 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 dang, Mo Austin and all these guys who, who ran, uh, you know, these, these labels that we were associated with. Yeah. And radio was a lot different. You know, so just the freedom of, of, of being able to experiment and be able to do. I mean, who would think that a song like Rigor Mortis? <laughs> Come on, you tip me to my other point, right? That's it. <laughs> you know the whole thing of what Rigor, Mo Rigor Mortis and, and Cameosis and, and all of that, where did that, was that on purpose of a like shock thing? Or give me the backstory of, of that, of the feel of, of those lyrics and that, and that vibe, that, that presentation. Well, yeah, in the, in the early days, because of our associations with Parliament and what we were listening to back then was a lot of the funk we were listening to. And also, you know, on the buses, man, we listened to Santana and, and Rare Earth and, and uh, 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 Steely Dan and all, you know, we, you know, that's where, you know, we, we, had, we, we had an amalgam of, of influences that, for, and each guy, brought their own influence, whether it be jazz or whatever, you know? So that kind of formed our whole uh, vibe in terms of where we would come from musically. Now, you know, Larry had his thing, everybody had their own vibe. So what made Cameo special to me yeah. was the individuals that came together at that particular precise moment to create something that was immensely special mm -hmm. and we didn't know what we had but when you know you, you come up with a song like rigor mortis and everybody's like down with it you go <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> you know what brother that was the and i thank you for that insight brother of of that that is the cameo feel that 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 you know how did the name cameo did that have an association with individuality or what was that the name changing the name from the the new york city players to cameo yeah partly it did um we were we were new york city players at the time and we were doing some shows up in canada we would always we drive our cars up to up to toronto and wow. you know take a van and have a <laughs> That's we had a, that yo, man, working, brother. We had a long red van, panel van, and we <laughs> stuffed the equipment in there. Okay. I remember sleeping on the equipment. Some of us would be in the back of the van sleeping on the equipment. Some yeah. of us, you know, and then we have our cars, we drive our cars, and we go out to Michigan, man, and, and yeah. uh, uh, Toronto, which we, we play at these clubs, like, yeah. you know, house band, you know, we'd, we'd be up there for a couple weeks. Yeah. And so one day we were, on to, we were in Toronto and uh, we had just did a single that was written by a, a, a Broadway show uh, writer and it was called Find My Way. And 
uh, Neil Bogart loved it. And so he wanted to sign us. Okay. So we were like, okay, well, uh, we need to change the name because we wanted to name ourselves, since we were the New York City players, we wanted to name ourselves the players, right? Mm, okay. But uh, the Ohio players <laughs> said, uh-uh. Okay. Oh, the Trump kings, I got <laughs> no, you. That's no, right. that's not going to work. Anyway. So one day we were in, uh, we went to Toronto, like I said, and uh, there were cigarettes called the Cameo cigarettes, called Cameo, right? So we were writing down, there was a billboard advertising Cameo cigarettes. And one of the guys said, Cameo, why don't we, you know, that sounds cool. Yeah. And we said, okay, yeah. yeah. And we, and Cameo was born. That was and it. then what we attached, we attached um, meaning to it okay. by saying, okay, well, we have a Cameo. Everyone has their Cameo appearance. Uh, and Cameo, like the brooch, yeah. very finely crafted mm -hmm. uh, uh, piece of jewelry or, you know, something. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how we, uh, that's how we uh, came up with the meaning behind the, behind well, the name. Y'all heard it, ladies and gentlemen. If you ever wondered what cameo, the name, the whole thing, there it is right there. And I remember, brother, you bringing up rigor mortis. That was my, like millions of others, introduction to cameo. Okay. Yeah. So that that just, I, I was, I use your term, I was cameosist. <laughs> from that <laughs> well Frankie right. Crocker you know you you familiar with Frankie Crocker oh, right yeah, yeah oh, well yeah. he he broke it he broke the song oh, really yeah oh, in yeah. New York City in New York at WBLS he broke oh, that single man and I'm driving <laughs> down the street everybody likes to know what were you doing when you first oh, heard this the is your first time you heard it yeah on the radio oh, please tell us man <laughs> I'm driving down the street and in my car and Frankie always had this uh, this uh, section in the show called World Premiere. World, world, world. Yeah, yeah. world premiere. So anytime you heard world <laughs> premiere, you knew it was going to be something that you never heard. That's right. So I'm driving down the street, and I hear, I don't see but you. <laughs> I pull exactly. the car over, man. I'm like, wow. <laughs> and Larry likes to tell a story that he was uh, he was in uh, in the haberdashery business, you know. He was fitting a customer okay. uh, pants yeah. when he went in New York City. While right. the, and the radio, yeah. when the song came on, uh -huh. he kindly asked one of his uh, <laughs> partners or co-workers if he could finish off the man's pants. <laughs> he left the store, <laughs> and, and that was the end of that. <laughs> Right on, brother, right on. So from that point, I mean, hearing your song on there for the first time on the radio, um, you, and people are loving, they, that when you look back on this, man, much love and much respect is going to you, Tommy. Appreciate that. Much love internationally, man, because hearing in your words, um, telling the stories of, of the music that I've mentioned before, the soundtrack of our lives, what we fell yeah. in love to, the, you know, our club days, our, our living life days. Yeah. And that's up to us, man. You yeah. know, well, that's, that's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. And, you know, everyone out there, uh, much love. Much love for all the, all, the, uh, all the years. And still, it's, it's just, you know. Somebody just said there was no cookie cutting in Cameo. No cookie cut. That's for sure. All original, but tell me that's about right. That. Yeah. yeah, we would never ever want to put any filler on a record. You know, that's every right. song was going to be dope. Mm -hmm. Every song was going to have some type of meaning, some type of uh, not meaning in the sense of some deep kind of thing, but just yeah. how it felt. Yeah. One song would not be like another. It wouldn't. <clears throat> you, you, you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't hear one song and then the next song would be, oh, wait, that sounds just like the last one, you know. Right. That, you know, it, we, we strove to uh, create something that was unique. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the sounds, you know, I'm sure through the course of Cameo's career, uh, you know, we created sounds and different things. Larry had a lot to do with that. Uh, 
and uh, and Nathan and a lot of the guys, you know, who uh, stuck with it and were uh, very instrumental in crafting the cameo sound. Uh, you know, we would, like I said earlier, we'd bring our individual influences to the table. That's it, brother. And and it and that's to us what we fell in love with, man. You know, when you turn it on, you're like, I mean, come on, when alligator woman hit, come yeah. on, man. I mean, you know, all, all my other cameo deepers, you know, we know alligator woman when that hit, brother. Yeah. I think other was like Devo was hot then, and and some mm -hmm. other groups were hot then. But you all always had that funkness. Yeah. Whether it was a different sound, different different uh, techniques or different groove, whatever, it still had that layer of funk on it, man. Yes. You dig? That's yes. what it was. I mean, that, that whole new approach. And when you mention different sounds, I think the most legendary to a lot of us is that snare in Word Up. Yeah. You know, that was like, you know, that snare in Word Up, man. Yeah, that was created, uh, Larry created that snare sound with many different types of layers of sounds. Break it down. Yeah. Um, if I can remember uh, how he actually did it or what he created, but it wasn't just a normal snare. You know, there were different sounds that he used to okay. uh, create that one sound, like on top of one another, one, uh, one sound, and then he. he place another sound on top and another sound on top, maybe a yeah. keyboard uh, sound, because, you know, that was the, the era of, you know, the, the big drum, you know? Big, 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 right, 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 right. Yeah, and it was just something so unique that uh, we had a lot of people commenting on it. I think, so. I forget, some, some guy called in, I forget who, who it was, Christopher Cross or somebody called, <laughs> called, called somebody, right? somebody like that called up and said, man, I don't know what you guys did or how you did that snare That's sound. Right. That's right. That's right, man. You yeah. know, and it's like when, when, when you think about, um, we mentioned Word Up, we mentioned Rigor Mortis, we mentioned the, the upbeat funk dance grooves. But when you talk about the ballads too, mm -hmm. of Fabio, all right, yeah. the spark my favorite is Sparkle. Yeah. My favorite is Sparkle, brother. And um, you know, when you when 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 you bring the the how have I lost you, Sparkle, when making that making sure that the inclusion of the ballad of the cameo sound was there and is there, was there ever a, a back and forth, should we do ballad thing or not do ballad thing? Or it tell me about the inclusion of your ballads, brother. No. There was never any doubt about what we would, <clears throat> excuse me, about how we yeah. would do ballads because we had great singers. Exactly. We had wonderful singers and songwriters. There you go. You know, Anthony Lockett, uh, who wrote Sparkle and sang it, was, you know, he's a Southern, Southern guy, man, from right down here in Georgia. So, uh, yeah, so he, he, uh, he did that thing, you know, and it was, you know, Charlie uh, yeah. singing Phil, you know, uh, uh, the songs he did for you and mm -hmm. all those wonderful ballads. You know, yeah. we had a sensitivity too, which a lot of people. Uh, now break that down. What do you mean the sensitivity in your ballad? When you're a, considered a funk artist, mm -hmm. um, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say this is gospel, but okay certain, I guess there are some, some who would, wouldn't believe or think that you could do okay, ballads yeah, that's so that's good, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I think that was one of the, one of the, uh, one of the interesting and definitely special things about Cameo is that the ballads stood up just as much as the funk stuff. Did. Yes. You know, yeah. because first of all, good songwriting, you cannot go anywhere without a good, with our good lyrics, man, good song. And, and the vocals, the backgrounds, the way we crafted the backgrounds and uh, uh, took time to really uh, feel it and to really uh, uh, give that all, get that effort, the effort that we, that that particular, each particular song 
you know, deserve, you know, yeah. Yeah. you know, very creative, you know, yeah. very, very creative um, stuff that we did back then. You know, I, I really, really looking, looking back on it now, yeah. you know, something to be proud of, bro. Right on, you know, really. right on, man. And I mean, like you said, musically creative, lyrically creative, and even the outfits. <laughs> fashionably created, man. You know, when you look back on the videos now, but what about the outfits alone? Not just the music, but, but what goes through your head, brother? <laughs> uh, well, a lot of our outfits back then, you yeah. know, during the cameosis period and all that, you know, we had a designer in New York City who did a lot of Broadway shows, uh, Bernard Johnson. Oh, he was a big, but no, he was a big Broadway uh, designer. Mm -hmm. So he created a lot of the stuff that we did. And okay. even though it was, say, if we all had the spandex on, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> Each one would have its own distinct style. You know, they wouldn't all be the same. Right. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think we, 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 uh, developed with the times, you know, that was the time, you know, the seventies with the spandex mm -hmm. and the whole That's nine, nice. you know, then you, you grow and you, you, you develop each year. Mm -hmm. But one thing about that, <clears throat> even in the early times, uh, our, our, our motto was even to not look like the people who were coming to see you. Gotcha. You know? uh, to always, okay. yeah, to not dress wise, right. you know, always be unique out there because people don't want to see a guy standing up there with jeans <laughs> when he came on you know came in out and looking like him unfortunately okay. that's the way not unfortunately but that's the way it is okay. now that's you know good. but time yeah. changed man. It's, okay. it's all good but that that was the way we you know was we it, right, man. Hey, man. It, like you said it just it kept on with that cameo-ness that yeah. that we all still love and remember to this day. Before, you know, I want to get into the, the recording process of you. When, when Larry Dotson was on, he talked about the magic that Barquets and a lot of other groups felt. Juan Vaughn mentioned it about the emotions and, mm -hmm. and they were recording with Isaac Hayes about recording all at one time in the right. studio together and how I remember Wanda was saying sometimes it was so positively thick in there, you could feel it. You could yeah. feel that creativity. Did was cameo? Did you guys do a lot of that one in the house recording as well? Absolutely. That's how it was all done back then because you didn't have the ability to cut and paste. You know, right. you didn't have that ability. You had to get in there, and 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 which made the vocals a lot stronger, I think, and made your ear tuned a lot higher mm -hmm. for uh, for notes and pitch. Mm -hmm. things like that because you can hear everyone around i just ran a, someone just sent me a black and white photo of of uh, four of us in a circle around a mic singing background part and mm -hmm. you know that just the magic is great you know that's 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 when you know that you're you, you're creating something that if you can do that that's real musicianship. That's real, uh, that is something that, uh, it just doesn't happen anymore. You know, it doesn't happen anymore. People do their vocals in another country and send them over to, you know, to the producer and, and he puts them in there. You know, you ain't even gotta be in the same room with a guy, you know, to do. So I'm, I'm really appreciative of the lessons Ooh. and the, you know, the teachings that that period of musicality taught me. Because anyone who came from that era, like Wanda, who, you know, I love the emotions, I, I, I love them to death, you know, uh, anybody that came from that era uh, did the same thing. And they're still doing it. It's still around that those, those, those lessons, like I, like I said, are invaluable, you know, because it just doesn't happen anymore. You know, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. I think music is being created now in a, in the times in which we live, you know, and the, the, the uh, surrounded by the, the technology um, married to the creativity that, 
that makes it what it is. But now, I mean, back then, we didn't have all that technology. We didn't have it. So we had to, we had to rely on talent alone. If you had it, you had it. If you didn't, you didn't. Simple. Brother, I didn't want that line to stop. I wanted to keep hearing what you was because, because come on, man. When I one thing I you know I I I I, I am a I'm a big advocate in giving respect where respect is due, brother. And you and you talk about you and Larry and Wanda and Shirley Jones and all of the people who joined us, brother. That's respect, man. Yeah. And then to hear the the one on, I mean, I got these going on. Hearing you say what you said. It took us, it transported us, that whole concept of fly on the wall or whatever. It took us for a yeah. minute to allow us as the millions of fans that, that love and respect your creativity to this day, it let us know, man, that's why. Yeah. Closeness of, like Wanda says, that closeness of proximity. Yeah. While that creativity is going on. Shoot, man, if there was a fly on the wall, that's the funkiest fly to this day, wherever that now, goes around, that fly, you know? Now, imagine this. Go ahead. You sing in the background part. Right. And you, you're, you're, you're laying your vocals on top. Each vocal, you're laying it. Uh, say, you, you know, you do a, uh, uh, you know, then you, you do a, 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 a unison, all unison. Then you add a harmony, and then you have three parts four part harmony and you're doing it one okay that's one part now let's go to another section of the song and do the same thing you see so that uh when you think about the work and the the work that went into recording uh back then without all the technology that you that you had uh and if it messed up or you know I mean, God forbid, you know what I mean? If, if something messed up, you had to come and do it over, you know, do it over. Oh, man, y'all got to do that over because of uh, level. And, but that's, that's what it is. And, and Wanda's right, that closeness. It was something about uh, uh, creating and recording in that manner that was, that did engender that close, uh, uh, positive yeah. thing. You know, it's like, oh, we all in this, you know, exactly. Exactly. we're all in this, man. You know what I mean? It's, Come it was, on. it was, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. They go to hand throws again. The hand <laughs> claps, that's right. Because <laughs> I mean, from day one, and when we turn the music on now, we right back all together again. Yeah. yeah. That's the way it feels. You right. Know? Right. Language, you know? Right. That's, that's right. You know, to fear no hazy, man, the drummer funky to fear hazy, he's throwing out love to you. Oh, my man, yeah. you, you know, but uh, uh, and Didi, thank you, girl, we love you. But yeah, that, my sister, that, that Didi, man, incredible sister, man. That's my sister, That's my sister man. man. That you is know? my sister. <laughs> you know what, Tommy, there is no way to condense your artistry, uh, the gifts you've given the world, brother, through what your career has done in 30, 45 minutes, it's just no way. And to try to do it, man, is, it's in my opinion would be disrespectful on something <laughs> else, okay? So, but I, I, I wanna talk about your, your solo project and mm -hmm. specifically uh, the, the, the project of whatever it takes, man. That, yeah. that, that track right there, brother, you are, you're speaking it and especially what we need right now. Could you give us the backstory on, on that track, man? That project, even. Well, um, first of all, like everyone else in the world, you know, George watching the video of, of uh, Mr. Floyd's uh, murder yeah. was it's just heartbreaking. It's, it stung me and just put, took me to a whole other place. Yeah. But I go from uh, back in New York with Eleanor Bumpers and 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 you know uh, and all the and the, and the people who were you know shot and killed you know ninety nine shots you know yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, of course Rodney King and you know it just goes all the way it just it's it's never ending mm -hmm. so that particular incident hit me 
so hard that I had to write something. And I'm telling you, uh, the lyrics just flowed with no. Come on, brother. No, 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 no. There was no uh, uh, mm -hmm. pause, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for a track, and one of my producers, Lee Hurst, I asked him. I said, "Man, you got a track for this?" You know, I could, you know. He said, "Show me one of your funk, because he always got something in the slide. You know, he always got something." Mm -hmm. So I said, "And you got something that's funky?" And he and he had that that thing that was so perfect, and the lyrics and everything I was doing was so perfect for it that um, mm. I uh, I was able to um, let it flow. You know, the lyrics just came, man, just came. And, you know, like, like I said, my father, you know, was a, uh, was a police officer, rest in peace, Pop. But, you know, and to see that what he went through, and I just missed, I wondered what our conversations would, would be like, you know, regarding this particular incident, yeah. you know, and uh, just with no accountability, man, no, no, nothing, just kill a black man, kill a brother for, for, you know, and for sport, you know? I mean, and it's been going on, videotapes. I remember Rodney King, everybody was like, yeah. oh, they got the video, man, you know, you can't, you know, it gotta go down. No. Yeah. So those days are over, like I say in the video, those days are over. And you said it plain, brother. I mean, yeah. I love, I, I've been listening to it, man. I, I, it's an incredible project. And, and it's not a, you're, you're speaking, you, you're from the camp that yeah. has spoken. I mean, when we talk about skin, I'm in, all right? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, talking out the side of your neck. I mean, those yeah. statements, brother. You right. Know, that, that, and it's just following, you know, whatever it takes is following in the form yeah. No. Right, right, right. And, uh, you know, I felt really good about it. You know, it's like one of those. I'm sorry if you hear that noise. I don't know if you hear No, no, no. Go right in, man. Hey, okay. we live. <laughs> sorry, we're not seeing it. Whatever. We're just giving love and positivity. Go it's ahead, live, man. man. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, yeah, that, that particular, uh, that song just... I was almost brought to tears, you know, uh, writing it. And I've always been going back to the, some of the other stuff that I've written over the years with, with Cameo, you know, You're a Winner and uh, Secrets of Time, you know, things like that. We're always kind of looking at the positive, even though there's darkness and negativity and you're looking at the, the period that there doesn't ever se seem to be a period of of, 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 uh, of calm, you know, of peace, you know. So what we do as writers, songwriters and, and creators, we try to impart what we have inside of us to bring that peace to people, to let them know that, yeah, this world is better Come on. than what it shows, Come on. than what we're being shown is better. That's right. So, <laughs> yeah, I feel good about wh uh, whatever it takes, man. You know, that's part of the album I'm I'm doing now, like uh, like you referenced earlier in your introduction. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a, a a whole thirteen thing, and it's it's amazing. I'm 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 trying to record as much as I can. I want to get it out by uh, the end of the fall. I know the dates keep going. You said summer. Let me forget about that. So I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I'm trying to get it out as as as, as this as whole thing has put a pause on so much. Yeah. Man. Oh man, COVID just put it. You know, just <laughs> backed everything up, man. But you but know what I'd like I'm to proud do? Of it. What, if you don't mind, brother, I'd like to play for the people for our positivity posse, man. And I think Wendy has this. Would you mind let us do that real quick? Please do. Please. Oh, I, I love the people to see it who haven't seen the video yet. Please, y'all. And, 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 and I'll get that queued up now. All right. Thank you, Wendy. And you'll, you'll remember what Brother Tommy was just saying. I'm talking to Positivity Posse. I see y'all. I looked over, having to look forward. The, the love is there, man. I appreciate you know, everybody, man. I appreciate the love, man, for real. It's all good. <laughs> What did you want to say to your, oh, here we go, y'all, ladies and gentlemen, okay. let's take a look at this positive, whatever it takes, Tommy Jenkins, y'all. <laughs> Sí, 
is erased Another soul needlessly erased By men given power to choose the right path Why is that so hard to do? Why does my blackness scare you? We're tired of dying in the streets Hey, what gives you the right to subtract or delete? I'm saying now, those days are over No justice, no peace We can forget about sleep, yeah We're gonna stay in your faces Until you need some real changes Whatever it takes, however it shakes We're gonna stay in your faces Until you need some real changes Whatever it takes, however it shakes How many times do you need to hear that our black lives matter? We need legit police reform But all we get is chatter Racist proud the streets and blue shirts or blue jeans When we tell you enough is enough You hope you know what that means hey. We're tired of dying in the streets Hey, hey. We give you the right to subtract or delete I'm saying no Until you make some real changes Whatever it takes, however it shakes oh. We're gonna stay in your faces No more excuses changes. Whatever it takes, however it shakes By any means necessary We're gonna stay in your faces oh. Until you make some oh. real changes Whatever it takes, oh. however it shakes Whatever it takes We're gonna stay in your faces Until you make some real changes No more Whatever it takes Whatever it takes George Floyd, George Floyd, George Floyd. Lord have mercy. Brother Tommy. Yeah, thank you. Man. And, 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 and I must say, yes. the killers of Breonna Taylor have not been yes. arrested. Yes, not, 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 not yet. And they're still on the job. So, you know, that that's unbelievable. You and know just what, goes to testament to what we're talking about, bro. Brother Tommy, saying. the power of that video to me, there's so many powerful points in that, man. And like I always say, brother, I just keep it real. I, if I get, I'm an artist. If I get emotional, I'm going to give it. I don't care. Yeah, well, that's what we that's are, what man. We're full of emotion. But that right there, it showed what I've always respected about our young people, man, that led this protest. Yeah, they man. jumped out in the streets, multicultural, like right, you showed right. in the clips in your video, man. Um, and then even your signs of, 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 of about positivity and no negative words or, you know, I mean, all of that, brother, you condensed it. Tommy Jenkins, please come back and talk to us, man, when Anytime, you can. Victor. You Anytime, Victor. Anytime. 
brother. You and Wanda are wonderful, man. You guys oh, are great. You know, I mean, Wendy, I'm sorry. Wendy, no, I yeah. got Wanda's on it too. That's Wanda's <laughs> Okay, Wanda, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I ain't wrong. Tommy, I want to thank you, not just for today, but I want to thank you on behalf of our Positivity Posse for just you, brother. Thank, thank you for your artistry over the years. Thank you for your creativity over the years. Thank you for the gifts that we still enjoy to this day of you, what you. you have given the world. Much respect, Tommy Jenkins. Thank you. Much, Much love to you, brother. Much you. love to you, man. Thank you. You and the crew. All right. right on Positivity Posse. That's yes, a, sir. Yeah. All right. Thank you, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we've talked about funk. We've talked about love. We've talked about racism. We've talked about the two viruses, of course, racism and corona. We've talked about so many. We talked about the journey of Cameo. We talked about recording. You were here with me, but all in that bubble of today, which we're going to put the positivity stamp of Tommy Jenkins on the front of that bubble. We ended it with positive love, y'all. And that out of sight, whatever it takes, that video says it all. It further explains the heart and soul of who Tommy Jenkins is, of what it is that we need to hear today. Keep on keeping on, y'all. It's always something to smile about. <laughs> Get those chills, you dig? Go ahead and let the tears drop of joy and of confusion and even of sadness, y'all, because that's human. We can't judge nobody. But what we can do is help somebody and we can help each other. And that's all we're trying to do on behalf of Christopher Brooks, Julie McKnight and the incredible Wendy Vaughn and your host, Victor Brooks. That's all we're trying to do every Sunday at one o'clock p.m. Pacific is just pass on a little positivity. Sometimes it turns into big positivity, but it's all because of you who join us from around the world just to smile and laugh a little bit, learn some lessons and count some blessings. And also all of our guests that have joined us so many times. Thank you all. Thank you all. And you know what I always say every Sunday, y'all, come get some of this positivity on you. Take a shower in it. Take a bath in it. You know, scuba dive in it. Hell, skinny dip in it. Whatever you got to do, jump in that pool of positivity. And when you come out, Sprinkle it on everybody that you can, because that's what it's all about, y'all. I love you. Much love and much respect. And don't forget, 3 o'clock today in about 45 minutes, we are going to have the incredible icon of soul and music, the one and only Eddie Levert of the OJs is going to stop through and share his positivity, which we've loved for so many years. I love you, y'all. We'll see you next time on The Victor Brick Show.